And that is why she's here today. So can you, with a standing ovation, welcome to the stage, my friend and my sister, Dikines Omolewa Ahmed, a lovely woman of God and a child of the living God. I love you. Thank you so much. You are next to be celebrated, though. You can tell I love her, sincerely. Yeah, I do. Okay. You're welcome. Thank you. We're very happy to have you here. And we know that people. you always, you are truth telling, you tell us as it is. In fact, we don't really need a mic, but it's good for forming because of the photo. Because <laughs> I'm sure you can hear us at the back. But for photo's sake, it's good to hold the mic. Okay. First, we want to know about your early childhood. We know you went to UI. We, it's a Tush school since I was there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you're a staff school and all. But what were the memorable experiences of your growing up? What are the things, your happiest moments, your lowest moments? We've handpicked these women to attend this program. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, first, I want to appreciate God for this great, 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 awesome privilege. Uh, I told you she's humble. To, you know, to be invited to speak in this great assembly this morning. Uh, but something she left out, which is the greatest award I've ever received in my life, was a privilege to give my life to Christ and uh, be an ordained worker for him. Uh, I am an evangelist of the gospel, uh, and I'm so, so privileged to be here this morning. Uh, there is not so much to talk about my childhood. My parents separated when I was 11 months old, so I grew up just with my mom. So she was, all I knew, she was the only example I, you know, I ever really got to know in my life until I got to secondary school. I went to St. Theresa's Primary School, I mean, St. Theresa's College in Ibadan. And um, there, in those days when I was in secondary school, we used to have some seniors. Then there, it was the, uh, the days of um, HSC where they used, used to do A levels in secondary schools then. So we had some of our seniors that during free periods, they move around classes and they look at any class that is not doing anything. They just walk into the place and they go talk to us about Jesus. It was at one of those encounters that I, Omolewa, give my life to Christ. And um, it's been a journey since then. And how old were you then? I think I was about 12 years old. I was Nine. actually in form two. Hmm. Um, I think one thing that propelled that then was um, growing up with a single mom, a mom who had seen so much. By the way, my mother's um, experience in life, she's late now. God has, you know, a lot of things happened and um, out of it, after she passed on, I kept on crying and crying and crying and I just couldn't stop crying because we had, we didn't really have a mother-daughter relationship. Mm. And um, what really drew me to Christ in the first place was my search for love. Mm. Just looking for somebody to love me. Uh, because of my mom's experiences, she, she's just this person, she loves, but she cannot just express it. Mm. That's one of the messages the Lord has given me for women in my generation. Mm that we shouldn't allow whatever it is that we have passed through to define our person because it in turn affects our future. Hmm. Um, it was just looking for love that actually I just wanted you know, to be cuddled. I want to feel like other children who have mommies and daddies. So that was what actually drew me to Christ. Wow. Has any of us been in that place before where you feel you just want to be loved? Your hands up. Maybe you miss your mother, you or you just miss that love. A lot of us are in that situation, and that's why she channeled it the right way. She gave her life to Christ. She moved on. Others are nasty to other women. That's how they deal with it. A lot of the women that you see reacting to you have nothing against you. They have a problem with themselves. They can't show love because they want love. Shall I tell you a story? Okay. Do you know, my mom too is not very expressive because she didn't grow up with her mother. So I remember that when I, I got quite a few prizes when I finished my master's and she was very proud of me. So she was coming to hug me. I thought 
she was coming to bite me. I know that sounds, yes, or she was coming to pinch me, or she was coming to tell me that my meaning, the meaning is still meaning. I can't, this is the best woman of God length I can do. So take it like that. So I thought she was trying to tell me my dress was too short. I couldn't imagine that my mom was coming to hug me because she wasn't hugging. She wasn't hugging. So a lot of us are coming from various places and we've we had to learn. So that's a memorable experience. You gave your life to Christ at 12. I did at 11. The similarity is getting plenty. Okay. Okay. So that was a memorable experience growing up. Then, what was your happiest moment? Can you give your life to Christ at 11? Or this moment? <laughs> <laughs> I remember that uh, I did lots of social things. My mom was a Baptist and she was and I grew up, I was brought up in complete Baptist belief. I started from Sunday, I was a GA, I go to town, then my GA there. <laughs> so when I gave my life to Christ, it was a running battle. It just it was it just couldn't come to terms with it. Mm. She came to report my funeral. She, and that's the way it is. The funeral that came to my child became my, my spiritual mentor. Mm. And we were very close. So when she was on Sunday, she, I took money to go to town. I had money to go to That's your every mother. Who are you? She's very artistic. The science of science, but she's very creative. She creates things. And she made something and kept it somewhere. She didn't tell her brother. She adored it. So he was now looking for something and mistakenly dropped what she had just made. And she was upset. And she just like, I didn't know it was there. I'm so sorry. He, he, he brought it to her attention. And then she was just frowning. I didn't even know about it. I was somewhere sitting down reading. And then the next thing he came wailing. He said, What's the problem? He said that he spoiled what can I made. And I said, Did you apologize to her? He said, Yes. But that she was so upset, she went and brought his favorite stuff and she stomped him. And he said, Now you know how I feel. And from that moment, I knew how it was. She's a very loving girl. And I couldn't imagine that. She was so upset in the fact that she looked for a very big way to hurt her brother. And I spanked her because I believe that I shouldn't spend my finger spanking her. She didn't want to spank her. No. Am I so brutal? She said that she did not think her now.
died and was visibly upset. You should have told me to come to your church instead of this. Now, two of you have gone to church. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, one are over and over. Yes. So, that's just something I felt a little bit awkward. Well, sometimes, you know, we have to judge the judges. But what would you do? Stop whatever you are.
Before I before go to take a walk, so I put my life on the line of death to compromise Jesus. Because I know that I, I have watched the drama on my Zion. You know that how the devil plays it out when you have a second chance. That 
the moment you miss it, you take it away. So I had to enter into a covenant for much of my life for you to see. Because I will tell you, it's not easy. You are going to say, especially when you are waiting on the Lord, the Lord was expressing how he had another baby. So you can imagine the kind of advices that you will get. You have another woman sending your home.
Yes, pastors live a sheltered life compared to some of us. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. But this is somebody like you. Somebody like you. Who lives where you live. Mm -hmm. You know, the temptations pastors don't face because people don't bring it to them. There's the church of the choir. God will help you. The other temptations that people you know, just don't bring near them because they're pastors. You understand? But on a daily basis, she faces temptation from bribery, from yeah. all those kind of things, and we're coming there just like you face. Mm. Just like you face. So how do you make it work? What do you believe your role in governance is? I'm not going to bore us with, she will tell you what the roles of the first lady are, according to the, there's nothing in the constitution. <laughs> the people are lawyers, no. But what do you believe your own role is? To the state, number one, to your husband, second. Number one, um, as a woman in leadership, because you've been thrust into it. First is to proclaim my Christ. Mm -hmm. Who is my identity? In a Muslim state, oh, yes. not Kwara state, it's like Muslim state, small. I mean, yeah. anybody from Kwara here? Yeah. They didn't come. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about this. Uh, you have to give your life to Christ. Jesus is the way. I don't do that. But one thing I told God, when all these political issues started, I went to God and I cried to him. By the way, I I, I have a lot of affection to see things. So I go, I was ordained an evangelist at the Christ Apostolic Church. So I, I, I visit the mountains a lot. I go on a lot of prayer meetings. And one of the prayers I first said to God is, Father, if Abdul becoming a governor will take Christ from me, may it not happen. <laughs> I prayed that prayer and I, I meant it. And by his mercy, somehow he allowed it to happen. So I was just with that. I, I know that I hold God that responsibility to keep that. Oh, Your Excellency, how many people can pray that? My husband becoming empty of a bank. If my husband becomes whatever, will take Christ away from me. From me, don't let it happen. Sincerely, your two hands up. <laughs> two, two. Okay, the others are saying, it's all right, Jamie. I like women to tell the truth. Some people will be like, you know, Jesus will manage your prayer. <laughs> will leave space for you. So you said that, and then what do you think of God? Because I know that you still hold the line. She's going to lead us in part of the prayers today. That's what we discussed here. Prayer is not necessary. It's necessary. It's never necessary. So, <laughs> so she will. But how do you do it? Where you are meant to? How do you manage? And you've been getting away with it. I don't know. There's nothing special. I don't do anything, no. And the only thing I've just realized. Because you can't speak on the pulpit like you're doing again today here. Yeah. I, and the imam is the, if you want to do strong men, you go to Kara State, you come there, go to Mali. <laughs> I, I, I told him, I, I told him, for, for me, that seat is about to be that. If, any, if you ask anybody who works with me, and you ask you what's my favorite food, they will tell you she will see all the righteousness is seen. So every... <laughs>
he wants. It's all he needs. You remember our holiday. Said here because overnight we had a program. Say one phone, you had a video. So on the phone, you had a video. While you are all needing. So the truth is, the more precarious your situation is, the higher you go, the more you depend on God. Let her not downplay that one. She has a video probably every fortnight. It is what it is. But I also was telling you that if my mom would take me to Mount because it's her my bestie. I mom goes to mountains like you. Said my God. <laughs> It came from somewhere. As a young 18 year old, that I had never entered public transport in my life because, as a professor's daughter, the daughter is so much. <laughs> that is true. I've never. Once you do, I'll tell you a story. One day I entered public transport on the campus. That means between, it's not, it's not 10 minutes. Just within the campus, you can walk. And I entered the public transport, and my, my other daughter friend, she took Professor Shepard's daughter. We couldn't say, oh, wow, that means we want to stop. <laughs> we couldn't. So we kept quiet. We okay. are on road 9. Okay. I'm on road 9. There's road 11. There's road 13. She lives on road 13. I live on road 9. We pass road 9. <laughs> when the bus got to road 11, somebody said, oh, wow, as soon as I see came down, I came down. <laughs> She's going to road 13. She took him down. <laughs> so she walked forward. I walked back. <laughs> Governance, 
in a ministry of any kind. Okay. Now you, I think you want to begin to understand why you are there. You shouldn't be in that ministry or in that office or that oil company and things are going wrong. When people come to your place of business, you should have taken charge of the spiritual atmosphere. That's your place. Wherever you find yourself is also your pulpit. Do you understand? Yes. It's yes. also your pulpit. You don't have to hold the mic for you to begin to minister. You understand? Every platform God gives you is God's platform. That is the meaning of lady ladies. You are not there because your husband God. It might be the other way around. Her husband might be governor because God wanted her there. Yeah. Because he looked at so who is from far state? Who is in the position that I can put there? That the wife will do what needs to be done. Do I have an Esther in the yeah. in the room? Yeah. You know what I'm trying to say? Yeah. So this is why we call it awesome leading ladies. It's about the fact that you understand that God has said that in the last days, the mountain of the house of the Lord shall be exalted above all mountains and above all hills, and all nations shall flow yeah. to it. Please don't, don't, let, don't let's record there, we take after Isaiah chapter 2 verse 1 to 2, and Micah chapter 4 verse 1 to 2. If you see something re repeated in the word of God, it's because it is for double and double emphasis. That is going to place men and women that he trusts in positions of leadership. Are you ready? Another thing I want you to note is that her problems had not ended before she decided to start serving God. Mm. And start repping for God. A lot of us, until God has sorted us out, shouldn't talk to us. If we need a new car and it's not answering, we should, should leave us first. We should settle loss. If we want to get married and it's not doing it yet, he can't talk to us. Some of us are like that. We are bleeding leaders. What it means is that while we are leaders, we are also bleeding and we are healing others. Do you get what I'm trying to say? Yes. You yourself need healing. You are healing. And God is using you to heal. Yes. And you're wondering, can't you see me too? Yes. yes. I'm telling you the reality of it. Yes. Yes. Have you heard of Steve Google's work? Yes. Okay, he was a hero of faith. Our own present day. He had kidney stones. And he'll be passing blood on the healing line. And he was raising the dead. His own daughter Alice was dead. But they will tell you this story. So you think you are the only one who has a challenge and is also serving God. And other people who know nothing, half faith Christians, those without experience, modern day Christians, will make you feel that maybe she's not praying. No, I think that. Maybe she's not praying. Please do not put your mouth in other people's business. If you do not understand what God is doing, somebody has a question, I know, or something to say. There. So for me, it's not about, I'm still going through. 
And more things we will continue to do. Yeah. Until we lay it down. Yeah. Yeah. So it's not about the pain I have been through. I think my love for Christ has just been, has helped me through those days of pain. Trust and obey is what God says. See, it is easy, my sister, to trust God when he's doing everything. But the Bible says in the book of Hebrews chapter 11, these all died in faith. Who says that? He they died in faith. Not having yet received the promises. Now that is not like the faith we preach these days. The faith we preach these days, if God does not do it immediately, then maybe you too are not believing. Yeah. Or your faith should be higher. Or you must have sinned. No. He said, so had the Lord was seeking for them and refused deliverance. That means this is deliverance. I said, I don't want to be delivered. Let me die. Can you imagine that? So there is a higher place. Also, treasures is not about marriage and children at all. Anybody who knows me knows that. Because it's a place where if you are married, you feel comfortable. You are not married, you feel comfortable. If you have children, you feel comfortable. And also because I believe that your life as a woman is more than marriage. You have the purpose in your life. That is what we teach. You were created for a purpose, for a reason. I don't know how long that life will be, but the life must be a life of impact. Because Jesus himself only spent 33 years on earth. If it is about longevity, then he would be a failure. Then he's not the kind marriage. of person that we If it's about marriage, he didn't get married. get married. So what kind of example is he? We are following a bachelor. That's what it means. <laughs> so you see, there's more to your life than this. That is why it's not a big meeting. However, we must settle down on time. I'm this Abuja. It's a new thing to me that people come later and they're greeting people. <laughs> And I still love all of you. <laughs> or in the middle, you go out, you take your phone, another person has gotten up. I don't understand. Is it your wig scratching you or their nail on your seat? When you come to a program, you sit down, you give us that time. You know what I'm saying? After that, go and do whatever you like. I'll tell you why. Because the atmosphere is going to change soon. And we're going to start praying. And if you are fidgety or anything or distracted, you will miss out. The sense of value that you attach to something dictates the virtue that comes. If you believe that there is nothing God cannot do here for you today, he will. This is just one aspect. We're shifting to the word and after that to prayer. And the God that I know, he has always done all things marvelously for us. Do you understand what I'm saying? Healings you will have. Amen. Testimonies, if we're coming back this time next year, you will have those testimonies. Amen. I assure you, don't let the nice dresses and the bags distract you. We're very serious people. Our prayers don't carry Birkins. We're very serious. There's somebody there has, is it a question or a comment? It was, but a change in the middle. Okay, so let her take a question. <laughs> Good morning, my name is Angel. Thank you so much for having me here. Um, you touched on that aspect of purpose. And when I moved back to Nigeria, I noticed that the way and the things, the ideas that my mom puts into my head is so different from what society puts in. There's that emphasis on the importance of marriage, the importance of children, the importance of um, what society thinks. And my mom was never about that, and she, she is never about that. She taught me to be very independent. But as a woman of God, when you know what your purpose is, how do you, I don't know how to ask that, but how do you fight those battles? Because sometimes this is the battle. Sometimes it's the women around you. Sometimes it's being confident in your environment that you're on the right track, that you're doing what you were called to do, and I'm not waiting. So sometimes you think, oh, we're waiting, but the reality is that if I really put my life into God's hands, and, he's, and I told him, lead me in the way I should go, then everything's going to happen for me in the right time, and I'm going to maybe have that discernment of what, um, what things I should be doing, what wisdom I should have at the right time, because I've told him that that's yeah, what I want. the question. No. <laughs> so the question is, how, I, I want to maybe hear more about how you've navigated that in society, really, because sometimes society is the peers in, in the room, 
you want, but the women are the problem sometimes, not just the society. How many people think that women can be the problem? We are women, yeah. Ah, there are too many of you. Okay, I'll come to the back. Why do you think the women are the problem? I'm going for my sister who came in just now. Eh? So that you know I still love her. Okay, right, women. You've missed so much, I don't know how to feel you. We've cried, we've laughed. <laughs> You look beautiful, yeah, talk. Why I think women, we are the problem because of what we are facing in the society now because um, I think we copy each other a lot. Mm. We're always thinking, okay, my friend did this, I have to be that way. We, we don't, we're not usually our own self. You, you wear your makeup or you have a weave on and you go out, you're not happy with yours, even though it looks nice on you. Then when you see your friend's own and it's green, and all of a sudden, you don't like green, but all of a sudden, green becomes attractive to you. And you're thinking, oh yeah, my hair has to be green too. And I think that's where all the problems women are having in marriage, in work, in business, we want to just be like each other. Uh, I will use marriage because it's a big, um, I have a big passion for um, we're having a lot of um, problems in homes, um, divorces. We have a huge one all over the world. And it's because you come and say, oh, um, my husband gave me whatever, this amount of money. And it's a lie. <laughs> <laughs> and you, unfortunately, you have a poor husband that's managing making you happy. What he loves is, he gives to you. But that little so we then copy each other. We like to be like each other. You be here, yeah, you're not smiling enough, so I'm going to call you. I see that you're, you're thinking, but you're not smiling enough, so I'm going to call you. When you're in the second room, you must smile. You're smiling. What's that second room? You're smiling. She knows herself now. Why do you think women, what problems have you encountered? Let's be real now, for women. A woman just love you in your own case. You are too tough. A woman just love you. Let's take it. <laughs> Why do men like this? The problem is women just come out. Oh, oh, this one is not married. This one is this. This one is that. So that's why I think women are the problem. Okay. Have you ever been gossiped about? Of course, it's like ah. Okay. <laughs> women are the problem. I don't so take it to heart. She doesn't take it to heart. You know when you're big, you're big. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Women might be the problem. Very short and sharp. Orange. Square orange. Women might be the problem. I think the reason why women are the problem is because we don't have each other's back. Mm, I give my hand. She said, they didn't give my hand. You don't have to. If he's a happy, why is he going out with them? I mean, yeah, but they still, it, it, it's okay. I mean, he may not be happily married, but, uh, yeah, know, just ask them. but they still go out with him. Yeah, make okay, it. even if he's not happily married, even if he's not happily married, this okay, so well, for instance, let's be blunt. A woman who goes out with another married a married man is not a good woman. Yes or no? Yes. You if, check your neighbor. Did she say yes? <laughs> you don't agree. Okay, a woman who goes out with a married man is not a good woman. Yes. She doesn't agree. Give her the mic. She disagrees. Uh, give her the mic. Such a thing. You know you have to worry about. And you agree now that you have gotten me. It's not yes, I, I do. But, but what, I thought, what I thought was that, um, for instance, um, when she, when we were talking, we said about um, the man is not happy, and I think the the, the word happy, you have, um, you see, I don't, I don't believe it's it's. It's one way, say, because the man is not happy, that's why he went out to No, no, we, we have laid that one to rest. No, no, because it's from there that we got into the fact that the man, the man uh, the, is not a good woman that went after a married woman. Oh, a, married man, a married man. 
You don't know yet why you're doing this. <laughs> you're going to have to take a position. A woman that is going out with a married man, forget the state of the man. If he's unhappy, that is his business. If he is happy, that is his business. A woman that is going out with a married man is a good woman or not? Yes or no, madam? No, no, no. Yes. 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 I can't. No, because you see, we put pressure. Now we, we we need to know that the reason is that the reason why we say we don't have each other's back is because we put pressure on each other. You know that's the problem. I deal, with, I have relationship with a lot of women, so I understand. Them. And like you said, I'm getting confused. We're still on the same question. We're not changing the same. Okay, yeah. All right. Hmm, I've entered Abuja. Yes, you have. <laughs> Where it is possible to have multiple answers to that question. Yes. Some answers are really not yes or no, but I think that what she was trying to say, which I just want to You don't to know what she was trying to say. Okay, what well, let me say own? what I was going to say, because mm. I was going to be in her camp. I think the difference is what you've just said. The act is bad. But the individual is not a bad person. So it's a different topic for a different day. But if I'm going to brand somebody a totally bad person, all of a sudden, because of that act, then I feel guilty saying yes to that question. That okay, madam, do you have a wedding band? No. I don't. Okay, good. So I'm How many of you have a wedding score? band here? All right, so one of you with the wedding band needs to answer that question. Oh, yeah. And you know the way you need to answer it? A woman who goes out with your husband, because right now you don't know if your husband is happy. Can we also ask a divorced woman to also answer? Oh, of course, now. Thank She's you. been there before. We, it's only we, we in this room, Mo. Muna, when I told you that Abuja is like that, you said no. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you said it is Lagos. Lagos, when we do it, we know what we're doing. <laughs> tell you that you see that your husband is the two of us together <laughs> and at that moment I know I'm doing you but where a woman can be a very good woman and she is going out with another another woman is drenching her pillow with tears because of you but you are a good woman I would like to understand because at the end of the day let us call a spade a spade and not a digging implement at the end of the day you are what you do so you cannot tell me the Bible says, wait to calm down this room now. Uh, you will stand up and raise up your hands. You know I love you. The Bible says that out of the same well cannot flow both sweet and bitter water. Are these the lies we tell ourselves? That I, I may be I may be going out right now with Hajia's husband, but I'm good. I'm good. I'm really good. Mike, Can a I married speak? woman wants to answer the question. I, I like, after her, young married woman. This is not the topic of the conversation. No. We're, we're talking about purpose. It, it, we're coming, we're coming. It's, I don't know why marriage always excites women. <laughs> we're talk, okay. sharp, sharp, sharp question. No. Yes, no. Uh, yes, no. with reason, no, with reason. A no. woman who is going out with a married man is a good woman. She's a good person. She's a good person. But the, what she's doing is wrong. Why is she a good person? Did you just hear what I said? That you are what you do. Yes. Am I a good doctor if all the patients that come to my clinic die? die. No. 
A woman who dates a married... Please hand me my mic. My mic, my mic. A woman who dates a married man mm, might be a good person. Okay, what is the definition of a good person? Sorry. Well, in the eyes of God, she's a good person. She's a child of God. Sorry, excuse me. Excuse me, me. Can you get my mic? She's making a mistake. Eh? She's making a mistake. Or are you married? Once she realizes what she's doing okay. and goes to the Lord I, I, and I, I, ends the relationship. I agree. I agree. I agree. Give her a hand. We have one house. Let's go there. One house. I will deal with them. Good morning, Wait everyone. It. Come. The question is very simple. Very simple question. It's either a yes or a no question. Thank you. It doesn't matter whether you are in the act, whether you did it before, or whether you are still it's doing it. It's not personal. But the fact remains that what is right is right, and what is wrong is wrong. Hey. Going out with a married man is totally wrong. It's hey. a no, no. No matter how you look at it, even the person is not good, the act is not good. Let's call a spade a spade, as they say. Minding his ox is Thank gone. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, I'm resting, no, I'm resting that. We didn't come to discuss marriage. Unless you want to say something very, very different. Mm -mm -mm. No, 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 no. My usher, my mic is mine. Usher it. What is the definition of a good person? Can I have a definition of a good person? You want to give us, you've spoken, you've spoken. A definition of a good, somebody who hasn't spoken. Definition, you're not answering that marriage question no. Because this is not the marriage circle of uh, Abuja. The definition of a good person. Um, what makes a man is his character. So I don't know how you separate your act and, uh -huh. your, and, your, and your person. So what makes a man is his character. If your character is bad, you're bad. Yes. It's either you're good or you're bad. And do not be deceived. Whatever a man sows, you must surely reap. Aha, uh -huh, I like that. Whatever you sow, you will reap. So if you are ready to reap what you sow, go on song. That's what, we're changing the topic. We're changing the topic. Should I allow her? I, you have spoken, I won't allow you on this topic. I am sure it's very important. <laughs> All right, we're about to round up, actually. We're rounding up. We're rounding up. Because we're shifting. But, you know, we need to talk about something else. Yeah. Ah, but I'm afraid. I'm going to call my husband when I leave. Sweetheart, I'm just checking on you. Are you fine? <laughs> Are there any good women around you? <laughs> hey. Anytime we come to Abuja, we are coming together. You are in Abuja, are you back? You are not. I'm flying, I'm coming. Come and pick me up because there are good women here. Ah. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Um, me, I'm okay. You do it, but you say, man, right now, I'm messing up. Uh -uh! That way you can come out of it faster. I've said your point. So I'll okay, just, good I'll girl. Just say sister. a few things, mm. please. Can we be clear on yeah. what the question is? Is yeah. the person a good person or is the act good? We are fast that. You see, no, and you no, said no, you wanted sorry. to talk. No, 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 please. We fast that past one. Past that because she answered the question by saying, okay. you cannot, the Bible even says it already. By their fruits, you shall know them. Okay, then at ah. what point does God's, God, does God's mercy come in? Please, I'm not asking. Ah, good. I love that. I love that. Can you drop the mic? Abacha died on top of an Indian prostitute. If he died at that time, was he going to heaven or hell? No, 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 no. No, no, no. no, no. Mm -mm. You answer that question. Yes. I'd like to answer if, the question. If Abacha died in the act of sleeping with the, an Indian prostitute fueled by some chemicals, would he have gone to heaven or hell? Honestly, I cannot answer that question. All right, since you can't, we'll me. answer it for you. Um, I didn't see you. I'm not partial. I didn't see you. No, wait, wait, wait now. What now? I'm coming back to a woman's problem because there's more to women than the problem.
Women in the corporate world, are we mentoring each other? That is part of the problem. Women, are we getting the help when we need the help? That is part of the problem. Is it a woman that stops another woman from getting the contract? That is part of the problem. Do you see? So we're coming there and we're ending there. So when a woman had your back and she did not have your back, especially women, maybe in the corporate world, in business and everything, that's what we want to face now. That's what we want to talk about. Beautiful. The lady in green. Me. Um, Oshret, you will be on this side. Me, you will be on this side. There's no need to cross to you. My dear. Okay, thank you. Good. So I have two examples. Yes, One, no. in the corporate world, there are many insecurities. And, you know, many people, who, many women who get to the top, they kick the corporate ladder. I was the victim of, uh, sorry, I must use that word, of something like that, where a, an executive director, for some reason, didn't want any woman to get, to get to that place. And she was very nasty, you know. And she? Yes. Uh, so, go on to the man now. I mean, she would look at a woman, she would look at me, look even at the secretaries. She said, look, imagine the disparity between an ED and a secretary. And she would look at her and say, that thing you're wearing, is it gold? Maybe it's not good, but let's not. Yeah. But, but oh, is it gold? Gold. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. You know, so the thing is that it became so bad that when she left, no other woman was appointed to that seat. That's one. Two, I'm a, I'm a widow. When my husband died, it's the women who were the nastiest, you know, most uh, ridiculous, would, would tell me all the horrors I would have to endure gleefully. You know. It is the men who said, I can't take this anymore. You're supposed to be educated. Are you condoling her or are you adding to her pain? So it's the women. So I think it's two things. Number one, it may be that they are lashing out from their own pain. Yes. And they don't know how to deal with it. Or they've been so through it and they want you to suffer what the, they've the suffered. Same thing, yes. So th th that could be one. The second could also be envy. Hmm. And the third, insecurity. It's one of them, but we have to deal with it. And that is why I'm very, very strong on mentorship. On a woman, you know, it's, it's uh, Catherine uh, uh, Albright that said, there's a special place re reserved for in, in hell, hell for every woman who does not help another woman. Hmm. So women, it's time for us to link arms, stand together, and make it Please work. Please, just give back, don't, you are too much. <laughs> she is too much. She stated the problem, she gave an example, she gave reasons, she analyzed. If you have that kind of serene answer, <laughs> something to say, you can raise up your hand. Something like that too. Why do women have to make other women suffer? Why, why, why? What does it add to you? What does it take away from you to say, my sister, you're looking good? It doesn't take from your own looking goodness. <laughs> Somebody's hand is up somewhere. Because you came from South Africa. <laughs> is the last one. Because you dissed us first. Like we are talking about marriage. Yes, ma'am. But because I'm big like that, I didn't mind. Thank you, ma'am. I think, I think um, she's, she said most of it all, that um, we, we lash out at each other and we don't know how to love the next person because we're not secure. When you're secure with who you are, with your... Um, education, your complexion, your statistics, when you're secure wh with who you are, it's very easy to love the next person and it's very easy to, to pull the next person out. And the other thing that women tend not to understand, well, talking from women from my country, sometimes women tend not to understand that I am not the weave on my head. I am not my Birkin. I am not my Christina Louboutin. So because I'm not that, when another woman walks in with that, they're not any better off than I am, and I'm not any better off than they are. Give her a hand. <laughs> Can I go there? Can I go there? Uh, some people are still angry with me, and they will love me. Can I go there? Yeah. Part of the reason why a lot of people must wear these things and post them, if you do it, I say love you, is because that is you. Without you, without those things, you are nothing. But are you wearing the Louboutins or are the Louboutins wearing you? 
Do you get what I'm trying to say? Ah, somebody is shaking her head there. Ah, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Look, if you can afford it, wear good things. There is nothing wrong. If we are not, that's what I was telling you just said. If you cannot afford it, don't kill yourself. You are you without the label. You are a person of worth. If you are not a person of worth, you won't be here. Either we agree or don't agree. You, you, know, you are here because you are worth it. Do you get what I'm trying to say? So it is not about your bag, about your shoes, about everything. Do you know when a woman enters the room, men are confused. They really think we wear these things for them. And who cares what a man thinks? <laughs> women wear it for women. It is like in the animal kingdom. It's signaling. So when I come in and I'm wearing a Birkin, got my nailers, my gold is speaking, you immediately rank me. The problem is a lot of us are wearing our net worth. <laughs> so that after that, nothing remains for house. I'm just, this is me. I'm finished. And we cannot continue. This is leading ladies we are talking about. There's nothing wrong with nice things. You know what I'm trying to say. But what have you put aside for the future? Hey, some people are depending on their husband. And a good woman is shacking up with their husband. Yes. And it can change any time. If that man leaves you, are you finished? Those are kind of things you want to discuss today. Don't worry, the world will also deal with it. Eh? We're not over yet. Ah, if I don't call you as fine as you are, you're going to think I don't love you. Is this about this women supporting women issue? Because we're going to round up now. We're coming next year. Should we come next year? Yeah. Ah, we are coming. <laughs> so we're coming next year. We'll continue. The conversation never ends. What can we do to change it? What can we do to change it? Beautiful. Let me spoken mm, in white. What can we do to change it? Thank you. Thank you very much. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. I'm Shirley, Shirley Hills. I. <laughs> what we want does to people eh? I don't recognize. <laughs> I want to say that um, for women to be able to support each other, we should move beyond competition mm -hmm. onto collaboration. Exactly. Please, that's a sound bite right there. You, you need to. Thank you. Because I believe that we can be stronger together. Mm -hmm. I believe that we can do things, we can do bigger things together. We can create more impact together. I'm going to share a personal experience. Very, very short. Okay. <laughs> that's fine. I just, um, my foundation just did a program in July. And prior to that, we, the women, some are members of the foundation and, um, I, f I found out that when we call for meetings, just a few would turn up. And, you know, I realized that because this was going to be a big outing, one of our biggest outings, we've been doing very informal meetings prior to then. Some people started having the, some people started getting very, I would say, envious. And so they wouldn't turn up for meetings. I started hearing stories, and I'm like, okay, I'm just going to follow the 80 20 principle, which one of our keynote speakers advised me. And so I decided to move with those who were committed to it. So most times, I think, in, in whatever, wherever we find ourselves, we should look for those people who share same interests and network, collaborate together. Thank you. Okay, good. So I always write on Instagram. My Instagram handle is Adjumoke Adenowo. So follow me on Instagram. We'll continue this debate, you understand? So it's not over yet. I say we are allies. We are not competitors. We are allies. I would like to say something. I'm coming. I would like to say something to you. Women, we are too petty. I need to stand up to say it. You don't have to like my makeup, my local government area, the way I look, where I'm from, before you get along with me or do business with me. Do you notice that men do business? They don't have permanent enemies. But women have permanent enemies. If I offended you 20 years ago, I, I'm still your enemy. Why don't you talk to I was at an interactive session. She didn't allow me to speak. <laughs> Why don't you talk to I made a point. I don't like the way she, she dissed me in front of everybody. 20 years time. When did it happen? It was 1987. <laughs> That's women, no. 
Men have no permanent enemies. Do you see political alliances? APC, PDP, everything. The only thing they have is a permanent interest. Where they're going with it, anybody can go with them. Women, we need to become like that. It does not make us fickle. I know women who will not give something to another woman because she went out with the boyfriend of their friend's boyfriend's kilo day. So many hang up, so many chips on our shoulders, so many baggage that we're carrying. Let it go. Tell your neighbor, let it go. Let it go. It's time to let it go. Move on. Somebody can diss you, not greet you when you enter a room. You know what you want from her. Move on. It is women who will know that they're not being respected. It is women who will wait for someone to greet them first. If they don't greet you, greet them. And if then I do things like, I'm greeting you. <laughs> ah. Oh, I didn't hear. I know. I know you didn't hear. I'm greeting you now. I will go out of my way to win another woman. Can we begin to try? Someone wants to say something. Women, what we can do, what we can do, We're go we've gone beyond the problems. These are resolutions. Because at a summit, we come to a resolution. We're wrapping up now. Good day, everyone. My name is Adobe. I'll just be brief for a sentence. The truth of the matter is that 90%, if not 99.9% .9 of the wo world's problem or women's problem is that we know of God, but we don't know God. When a woman knows God, when you have God in your life, I mean know God, God is your own person. It makes a world of difference. We won't be here talking yes. about those problems. Yes, Thank yes. Thank you. Yes. So she's saying if you live your Christian life truly, if you really love in one word, because God is love, if you really care about that woman, that means you are a woman in the corporate sector, and you are thinking, See, a lot of us did not get help. I don't have a female mentor in any corporate sphere right here today. All those who should have helped me give to me. Till today, when I started out in ministry, the woman who should have mentored me, she kicked me out of her church. That's what she did. Her husband said, leave her, leave them. She said, no, girl, that's not what we said. We said they're going to leave. There was no talk about, is the ministry, at that time people were, getting their miracles at their miracle at every <laughs> at every turn nobody wanted to know just go because another woman cannot share this space with me yeah, yeah. do you get what i'm saying and there is my mother will say the sky is big enough for birds to fly without colliding you get what i'm saying you have your own crowd another person has their own crowd each one is doing good and there's some people who would not listen to to me who will listen to you you know there's some people who would not listen to me because my head tight and my mini in my dress is not long enough for them this is mini so they have their own crowd too so everybody run for everybody has their own crowd allow your sister to be if you cannot say something good about her say nothing how about that just say nothing and you know another thing we do not have to like each other to get along no you know we don't have to be friends what it means is just don't get in her way. Don't block her. Half the time the women are going around with frowns on their faces. You don't know what she's going through. When you see a woman who doesn't smile, reach out to her. Her pain is not, is not with you. She's going through her own internal demons. A good woman might be disturbing her. <laughs> when I use it enough, you will understand what you are saying. <laughs> okay. Okay. I that is one word. Take my card at the gate. <laughs> oh, yeah. Quick, quick, quick. It's you. I came at music collections because I make these bags. Okay. And I've been sitting here because we've been talking about women not supporting each other. And my bags have been working through the years with a lot of women that are in here. So I want to say thank you because there are a lot of women here now. For supporting who support. you. Yes. Who Forget all me? that one. You are paying for who this sponsorship. <laughs> this, what, you, is it a joke? Women, so you have come to <laughs> yes. advertise your bag who in Sheraton. Yeah, and you think it's it. going to be free? No, don't worry. It's not free. But I have to say it because if I didn't have women, my sisters are here, my friends are here that have supported me and spoken about me. I wouldn't be here. So I'm happy and I have to say thank you on a positive note. Yeah. Thank you very much, Maya. This thank is you. my very first time meeting you in person. My colleague here invited me. Thank you, uh, colleague. Yes. 
And I, I think I'm falling in love with you. So oh. <laughs> um, first and foremost, I'm sorry. I want to thank you for this because it's very, very difficult to find women who tell you the truth. We go out there and lie and do not inspire people. And that is why you see a lot of women, they are so fake. But when you say the truth, you are being realistic. And then you realize that a lot of women are going through the exact thing. And then you have given them a solution. Mm. Now, back to your question. She said something which is very important. The love of God is shared abroad in our heart. When you love, the God's love that is shared abroad will, be a, will give you an opportunity to be able to transmit it to others. Mm. It doesn't matter whether the person is your class or not. Even the security, the cleanness. When you transmit that love, you look awesome. You look great. My colleague is here. She will tell you that. Yesterday, I was at commission. And there was a lady. She said, you always say good things about me. You say I look good. I said, because of the God's love, I have to do that. I don't see anything wrong with you. Even if there's something, that means you're not feeling fine. That is the truth. <laughs> now, this is what we have to do. Even sometimes when somebody calls you, there's something you say. I'm great. Even you're not happy. I'm great. I'm excellent. You don't know the energy you've transferred to that person. It actually inspires them. Now, what I also want to say here is this. In the corporate environment or whatever environment you have, there's something about the fact that some of, us some of us are born to lead and some are to follow. Some are to cut the grass. Now, a lot of women feel that because I've been through that, she must go through that. No, 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 no. What you are supposed to do is to identify the ways to make it easier for them. And that is how to drag people along with you. And I think I've said the last one, which is sharing. She's my colleague. I was married before, I was divorced. And I'm getting married again, I've been engaged. Yeah. But, but you need to understand something. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not shy about it, I'm not ashamed. Because yes. I'll tell you the truth, it's not yes. easy. Yes. I was telling her that many was her choice, but she tried. How many women can go through that? I've been waiting on God for over eight years. But my mom would call me and tell me, you have so much peace, you don't have peace. I said, mommy, I'm not worried, they will come. You'll be an international grandma. So don't worry about that. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. Give her a hand. I'm turning it over to Her Excellency. How can women do better with women? Let me not use the word support. We have overshot our time, but I have to allow you to talk. And there are some fundamental issues that have to be addressed. Yeah. Uh, I think from my own experience, first and foremost, like you said, for us, it's not all about marriage. It's not all about children. Uh, but we must know that as a being that has been created by God, we have been created for a purpose. With a purpose, God had something in mind. And recently, the Lord opened my eyes to what happened in the book of Genesis, where the creation of a woman came as a result of a need. Mm -hmm. A need was identified. So I feel that as a woman, if I understand the fact that my being here on earth is to satisfy God's need, he said, these people have I formed for myself to please me. So first and foremost, my life is about pleasing him. It's about praising him. And when your ways pleases God, every other thing will fall in line. So I think the first thing for us is to identify the fact that we are women created for a purpose. A lot has been said today, but I didn't hear anybody talk about creating impact. And I want to share one experience. I just shared it with my colleagues yesterday. I said, a lot of times we are living with over bloated egos. Those people that you think actually notice the bag you are carrying, they don't. <laughs> and the reason, <laughs> that's the truth. I have seen a lot of poverty. I see things every day. I say to my aides, when we need to queue, let us queue. Because that person in front of you does not know I'm a governor's wife. It is when you are saying, move, 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 move. That's when they say, who is this nonsense girl? So it's an overbloated ego thinking that that person, as long as you are not putting food on my table, you are not adding value to my life. I don't care who you are. So if you want to matter, make sure your life is matching to somebody. That's amazing. 
I always say, nobody is going to remember you for how beautiful you are, how rich you are. It is the little you invested in their lives that's going to be remembered when you are gone. Does that answer your question about purpose at the end of the day? It's part of it. This is what we're going to remember. I would have asked her, aren't you going to miss after 2019? But I know her answer. She told me once, she said, the eight that go with us to, what's that name of that your friend? Um, hey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, <laughs> we call it Metropolitan Square. So, you know what I wanted to say? Yes. Where I said, after 2019, on the, 29th of, on the 29th of May, 2019, we will leave the government, Kwara State government lot to the eight, the security, the siren, the special squad in front of our car, they will lead us to the Metropolitan Square. That is where the swearing in of the next governor will be. As soon as he's sworn in, power has changed hands. Mm. Okay, can you give her a hand as she deserves it? Thank you. Oh, they want me to give you a gift immediately. Come, come, Ada, come and do the honors for us. A gift for the first lady. We cannot afford. <laughs> all right. So, from awesome treasures, from all the ladies here, Abby. Don't worry, you will pay for it. <laughs> um, with all our love, for being so honest, so very, you're so honest, for being so real, for being a role model that we can safely follow. We love you very, very much. Okay, thank you. Uh, it's an aid that will collect it. <laughs> Muna, do aid. <laughs> Give it to Mr. David. Thank you so much. Thank you so All right, much. we are moving to the next level.